Global Summit on National Security, and I thank you all for sincerely being here today. This summit is holding in the shadow of the death of the Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Ibrahim Atahiru, alongside other officers of the Nigerian Army and Air Force, who last week lost their lives in a most unfortunate air accident. On behalf of the House of Representatives, I extend my sincere condolences to their families and pray that they are comforted through the abundant grace of God. Since the minute silence has already been observed, let us in our hearts pray for the departed, Late General Ibrahim Atahiru, Brigadier General M.I. Abdul Kadir, Brigadier General Olayinka, Brigadier General Kulia, Major Hayat, Major Hamza, Sergeant Umar, Flight Lieutenant Asani, Flight Lieutenant Olufade, Sergeant Additional, and ACM Uyedipu. They all died in the service of our nation. May their souls rest in peace. Lieutenant General Ibrahim Atahiru and the soldiers and the airmen who died with him gave to our nation the last full measure of devotion. It is for us, the living, to show fidelity to the cause they served by re rededicating ourselves to the task of building a more perfect union. Through the achievement of lasting peace and abiding prosperity, we honor the memory of those who have given their lives that this nation may live. Today, at this time of our national history, when insecurity threatens the authority of the state and the foundations of our nationhood, when the activities of bandits, insurgents, and criminals of every stripe impede our efforts at progress and prosperity, we must confront the realization that our previous and current approaches to addressing the challenges of insecurity have not yielded the desired results. Ultimately, an enduring peace depends on our ability to build a society where individuals can aspire to and achieve their righteous ambitions on the strength of their effort and regardless of the status of their birth. Yet, achieving this kind of society depends on securing the lives of our people, protecting property and investment, and ensuring that people can freely traverse the length of our country without fear of danger or molestation. The legislative obligation to make laws for the good governance of the country exists alongside a duty to make sure that the policies we develop and the legislation we consider and pass address the most pressing concerns of the Nigerian people. Policies and legislation must also include the considered contributions of our citizens and be capable of meeting the highest ambitions of our nationhood. We have convened this special summit on national security to jointly as citizens and public servants find solutions to the problems of insecurity in our country. We are here because we know that our, nation, our national ambitions will not be attained without lasting peace and security. We are here to have honest conversations about who we are, where we are, how we got here, and the hard choices we must make to guarantee a secure future for all our nation's children. We will, over the next few days, consider the contributions of a cross-section of Nigerian people and develop therefrom recommendations that take into proper account the social and constitutional, political and economic factors that contribute to insecurity in our country. We will identify specific legislative actions and make practical, practicable recommendations for executive action. We do not seek and do not have it in our power to put an end to all conflict. Our responsibility in government is to ensure that the lives and property of all the people within Nigeria are safe from the predations of those who use violence for profit or in service of religious or ethnic objectives. And to make sure that whosoever raises arms against our country is served 
the full measure of, of justice. This summit is not an avenue for name calling, for apportioning blame, or absolving responsibility. Our national house is on fire, and the people we serve rightly expect that we devote all our energies and resources to trying to improve the future rather than be paralyzed in the present, grieving about the errors and failures of the past. It is by the work we do now that we can redeem ourselves and save our beloved country. This summit, therefore, must be and is solution-driven. Our deliberations in this summit and the recommendations that emerge therefrom will reflect all the factors that have precipitated our present circumstances, including issues of economic fairness, the allocation of state resources, the deficiencies of our criminal justice system, and the role of critical national institutions such as the National Assembly, the judiciary, and the state and local governments. The work of this summit will be conducted behind closed doors to allow informed stakeholders to engage, frankly, on matters of national security in a protected environment. This way, we can participate in an exhaustive consideration and cross-fertilization of ideas. Already, thousands of memoranda and other submissions have been received and reviewed. These will also form part of the summit's report and recommendations. This summit will produce recommendations for legislative action and the National Assembly will begin to implement this immediately. We will present to His Excellency President Muhammadu Buhari DCFR our recommendations for executive action and Mr. President has assured me that he will receive and consider the report as a good faith contribution by Parliament to address a matter of urgent national importance. Let me at this juncture say this is a collaboration of both the executive and the legislative arms of government. Indeed, Mr. President, I got a call from his office a couple of days ago. And for want of a better word, he was excited about being here personally himself today. But unfortunately, yesterday, things came up, and I was called by Mr. President. Would either zoom in or be represented by the SGF, who hopefully will be here before the close of business today. So, Mr. President is on all fours. All arms are on deck, and I must say, at this point also, of the cough, that when nations go through crisis, as we have seen in advanced countries that we try to emulate, emulate the best from, 9-11 in the United States, for example, when nations go through crisis, they do so in oneness of spirit. They forget persuasions, color, creed, religion, parties have no place. The nations pull together in times of crisis and this is what I expect us to do in Nigeria at this time. The work we will do here over the next few days will only yield the desired results if we all across government recognize that only an all of government approach can guarantee our success in overcoming the challenge of insecurity in Nigeria. I ask that in that spirit, we resolve to work productively with one another in the joint task of securing our nation and protecting our people. Ladies and gentlemen, we are a nation under attack. Our victory in this present battle depends greatly on our ability to set aside our differences and mobilize in one accord against an impending catastrophe that threatens all of us Again, like I said, regardless of language, religion, politics, or status. It may well be that it is in the crucible of this battle for survival that we become a nation fully formed. Therefore, we must rise to the moment with passion and perspective. We hope for peace and desire its benefits. 
Yet neither fervent hope nor heartfelt desire will suffice because the ends of peace require action. As in the words of the former American President Bill Clinton, he said, and I quote, Peace must be waged with a warrior's resolve, bravely, proudly, and relentlessly, secure in the knowledge of the single greatest difference, difference between war and peace. In peace, everybody wins. Let us in this defining moment work together to, to pursue the things that make for peace. Let us dedicate ourselves to ending violence and disorder in our land and to improving the quality of life for all our nation's people. Let us work together to uphold the honor and glory of Nigeria and free our nation to be a place of peace and justice forevermore. Let me again at this juncture thank our eminent royal fathers. There's no gainsay the role they have to play when it comes to ensuring peace and stability in Nigeria. On behalf of the House of Representatives, I thank you. You've been here for a couple of days. You've dedicated yourself to this course. This uh, event was supposed to hold on Monday, but for what happened? And when I spoke to the Sultan and the Oni of Bife, as inconvenient as it was, because they had to go back to their respective domains, they remained because they believed that this was a worthy cause that was being pursued. And I thank you for your dedication and your service. I want to thank the service chiefs that we are with you. However way, whichever way you look at it, these are trying times for you. You've just lost one of your own, a bright star. But I want to thank you on behalf of the House for your dedication to service, for your commitment, that in spite of all that's happened in the last few days, you remain, you remain committed. You are gallant soldiers. Officers and gentlemen who we rely on, who risk their lives or men in uniform every day so that this country may survive. For you, we owe our eternal debt of gratitude. I thank His Excellency the President Muhammad Buhari, GCFR, for his support for this special summit on national security. I assure all Nigerians that the House of Representatives remains committed to doing our part to enhance the government's efforts at securing our country and protecting the lives and investments of Nigerians and all those who believe in our country. I thank all who have contributed and will be contributing to the work of this summit. May our efforts yield success and set our nation on the path of peace, stability, and security for all. I welcome you all once again to this special summit on national security. and I thank you all for your presence here this morning. May God bless and keep you, and may God bless our Federal Republic.